And then you go continue into Curtis, where there is a thousand acres of developable residential land on a green field where you can build the tr first truly transit oriented development uh, around a GO station. And then you move it into Bowmanville where people have already bought homes around the station. It makes sense to do it on the north side. The return on investment is huge. The jobs that we create is absolutely unbelievable. And people actually live where we're proposing to build the train. But the great part about that was the municipalities of Clarington and Oshawa coming together along with the region to work together and share staff so that we could get the message collectively to the province and get them to buy into it. And we need as businesses, and, and we are all, as government, we're still a business and we have to think differently on how we deliver services and how we interact with, with our residents uh, from not only the time that the phone call comes into the region, but to the time that the problem is resolved. I'm really proud to say that um, the climate, climate Adaptation Plan for the region was recognized um, in 2018 as the best climate plan in Canada by the Federation of Municipalities of Canada. So the stuff that we're doing around climate, including last week we dare, dare uh, proclaimed a climate emergency, is really starting to take place. And we think about climate and the challenges in everything we do. It's easy to oversize a culvert today and then go back and repair a culvert 10 years from today. And the example of that is that trying to fix a culvert in downtown, uh, that is in downtown Uxbridge, that that project's now gone to $26 million. But the original part of that culvert was built by stonemasons 100 years ago. So we need to think better, we need to be smarter. It rains harder, it's colder, hotter and it plays havoc with, our, with what we do. And, and the other challenge is, and we never talked about this, but we have the problem with wild weather now, where you have uh, winds that come up nowadays that just do play havoc, but they just play havoc in one location. There's been two microbursts in Oshawa in the last six or seven years that didn't affect anywhere else in the, in the region. So I'm, I'm really excited that the roles that the region plays and the services we deliver, but What's really exciting is you're seeing that the eight municipalities working together for the common good. It's about creating hope for our young people. You know, Durham is not only the center of excellence for energy now, but you know, we're a center of excellence for education. And when you look at what's going on in Durham region and the universities and colleges we have here, it's simply amazing. Do you know that Durham College leads, um, leads Canada, and especially in the college sector, in artificial intelligence? The last year, they partnered with OPG to put a Boilermakers pre-apprenticeship program in, and I think it was either 130 or 160 young people traveled through that program. Now, this is a pre-apprenticeship program. Every one of them was hired. That their food-to-table program over in Whitby is simply amazing, and then you go up to the college here, and they share that space with UOIT or Ontario Tech now, and you now have the largest ground source combined heating plant in all of Canada. The, they're using geothermal technologies in the ground for the kids that go to school that are studying green energy where they have also in the Whitby campus wind turbines and solar. The Durham is becoming leaders in a lot of areas and Ontario Tech is also referred to as the MIT of the North. Our programs are related to engineering and um, some of the stuff that we're doing in the auto world here is legendary. You know, we have the largest climatic wind tunnel in the world. It's very interesting. We have the largest climatic wind tunnel in the world with a movable plane. So you've got literally a road that moves within the university. And then you talk about Trenton. If you go over to the university on, uh, if you go over to Trent's campus, you'll see there's a big addition going on. That they, they forecast there will be at 2,500 students very shortly. And then McGraw-Hill Ryerson down in the waterfront in Whitby was taken over by a Christian university. We've got all these brilliant young people in our communities from 156 different countries coming to Durham Region to live the dream of an amazing education in a wonderful place. And then a lot of them aren't going home. They're staying here and they're raising their families. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the future. And I'm really excited about a couple of things that are on, on the block. And uh, I know before I go to questions, one of them will be is I am a big fan of building 
an airport in Pickering. I'm also a big fan of vertical farming. And if you talk about the populations around the world and as we increase, the only way to meet the needs of our residents is we're going to have to farm differently. A one acre greenhouse with eight racks is eight acres. If you go down to Leamington today, there are uh, greenhouses down there, 25 acres in size, and if you're in Orlando in April and you're eating an English cucumber, check the label, because chances are it's from Ontario. That the Masterati family employs 2,000 people down in Kingsville where they grow tomatoes and English cucumbers and a whole bunch of other stuff. And they are leaders in that section. And if you go to Japan, you'll find that they grow strawberries in greenhouses. But if you Google vertical farming in airports, you will find that around the world this isn't a new concept. You'll find that in some countries they use livestock, livestock to keep the grass down. You'll find that they have beehives everywhere. You're finding that they're growing food on airport property. Uh, this is a great opportunity to take the very best technology that we have in Canada, the best application of uh, airport technology from around the world and build the first carbon neutral airport that ever existed. <coughs> that you can use technologies to do that and, and the government has the ability to legislate what they want and what they see at that airport. But on the other side of that, for 47 years there's been no decisions, 19 reports, the 20th report has been written now and it's been on the Minister of Finance's desk, or sorry, the Minister of Transportation's desk in Ottawa, and it wasn't released prior to the election, and KPMG has authored it, and it's time they released the report. So either allow us to take and do something very special with that land, or allow us to build an airport, but let's get on with the decision. And the key part is, half the size of Pearson is 150,000 jobs. 150,000 jobs. Pearson employs over 300,000 people, direct and indirect jobs. So allowing our kids to work close to home, creating technology and growing food on the airport lands, makes absolute sense, but the fifth largest business in Canada is aerospace. So why not do what they do around the world and do it all here? So I'm excited about that, and some may not agree, and that's fine too. Um, but for me, you can no longer, as a, as a group of elected officials, think about this year, next year, and then just turn the council. Our next plan that comes forward from regional council will take us out to 2024. It's outside of the term of council because you need to use the same things that you do in business. You need to think one, five, ten, and fifteen years down the road. You need to think about the future. We know that down the road we're going to have a million people living in the region of Durham and now we need to be able to make sure we have all the tools that are there to make it work. And that's why you're seeing all the stories about retrofitting existing hospitals and the potential of building a new hospital in Durham region. You know, to retrofit the Bowmanville Hospital to meet their needs going forward is $300 million. Ajax needs $300 million to meet the needs of that community. The new hospital, wherever it will be built, is, built, is estimated to be $2 billion. And we need to reinvest in our cancer center because it's been open for over 10 years. So, um, we have uh, some challenges and some opportunities, and we are doing some amazing things. Um, and I'm proud of, of the people that, that, we, that we have working at the region for what they do each and every day. I can tell you that we wanted to make sure that the newly elected MPs knew uh, exactly what we were talking about. So we met with uh, six of the seven, one of them hasn't met with us yet, um, that we delivered the message of the region. We've talked about transportation, we've talked to them about climate change, and climate adaptation, we pitched the GO train to them as well. And we've tried to make sure they understand that in order to maintain your infrastructure, you need to invest in it. And all too often, governments will say, because you're challenged with, with dollars, you won't put the money in where you need to do it. So an example, all of us have houses. We know that in 15 years, we're going to need to, to have some money to put a new roof on and have it reshingled. Government's no different. We need to make sure that we have the money that we need in our reserve accounts to make sure we can do the things that we do similar to what you do at home. So I'm, I'm excited. I, uh, I, I'm looking forward to this budget session. I can tell you that my goal is to get it uh, under 2.5%. We will. We're going to have to hire during this budget as we did in the last budget. We hired 100 frontline service people, paramedics and police officers, people who are working on long-term care facilities. 
Um, we're working hard now as we go forward, as we add infrastructure, we will need to employ more people. The good news is a lot of the construction costs are paid by development charges. But I'll give you just one example and then I'll take questions. Is climate has become such a problem that if you live down on the lake shore or anywhere along Lake Ontario, you can see it with the erosion. We need to build a new water treatment pumping station in, in Newcastle. And because of the fact of where it is, we need to raise that five feet higher under the ground than we would have had to do five years ago. Because infrastructure is essential, and, and doing it the right way will mean that the people during the toughest times have the infrastructure they need to support them in their day-to-day -day lives. So I hope I haven't bored you. I hope you're excited. If you've got kids, you should be really excited because it's Durham's time. And uh, I'll take any questions that you have. threatened by Joyce Marshall. Um, if you haven't met Joyce Marshall, she is just an amazing, amazing lady and we were in the process of building three hospice centers in Durham Guy was there for the, you were there. And, and what I want to say is the one in Port Perry is under construction as we speak. Um, the ones in Whitby and Clarington are very close. And you know, at the end of someone's life, they deserve to have a place where they can be at peace and have the dignity that they deserve. Something we didn't have in Durham. I can tell you the challenges that we have along the hospital right now is not everyone that's in the hospital, but there's 230 hospital beds in Durham Region that are taken up by someone who is in a long-term care, high needs challenge in their lives. And this will go a long way to help us solve that. But it was great to see you. I believe there'll be an announcement on Thursday of the yeah. I hope so. Yes. You talked earlier about um, doing electronic uh, payments for, for water bills. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to a point where we have electronic like, meter reading so that we don't have to punch that stuff in. So uh, I think you probably will eventually get there, but the challenge that you have with that is not everywhere in the region of Durham do we have effective broadband. You know, one of the challenges we have, and we pitch it to the federal government and provincial government every opportunity we have, we have places along the lakeshore, not just in the north, where you have zero connectivity. The gas company's going to drop by your house and point their little machine at the transmitter and it's not drop it. So it's possible. Oh, everything is, is possible. Let us get the water bill thing fixed first. Um, and just to give you an idea, it's, it's been a couple of years to get that system changed over. It's a whole philosophy change for our staff. And change is good, change is constant, but sometimes it, people get complacent and they don't really want to do that. But in today's day and age, um, with, with the changing in cycle of, of people, so as our long-term employees leave, so people who have been for the region for their 30-year career, or maybe even longer, we've had some for 40, they started in the days of typewriters. Um, you know, they, there was no cell phones. Um, chances are, you're lucky you had a pager that beat to that meant you had to call the office. Most of us are one of those. So am I. Um, my, first, my first pager was one that just beeped and that meant I had to call. My second one had 15 seconds of voice. I thought that was amazing. Uh, my cell phone, my first cell phone weighed like six pounds. It was a, <laughs> I made two phone calls for 10 minutes and the battery was dead. But, um, we're changing the way we do business and I can tell you that the young people that we're hiring that are coming into workforce are doing things that are absolutely unbelievable. And I truly believe that technology is, using technology the right way is an absolute cost saving. Yes? Are you doing anything on the infrastructural roads? Because, like, the, the way Whitby, Oshawa is expanding, the traffic jams now are just crazy. But the one feeder route that they could look after a lot of them is too expensive to drive on. So we've advocated the removing of the tolls on the 412 and the 418. Yeah. So this is, I can tell you how it happened. Um, if you remember, um, the city of Oshawa and, and uh, the, re well, the region of Durham uh, challenged the Minister of Transportation about uh, six, seven years ago on um, stopping the 407 at Simcoe Street. And we won the argument, they eventually built it out to the 115 where it was supposed to go and federally funded to go to. But embedded in a piece of legislation 
to get, and I'm, it's only my opinion, they might have been angry with us. Um, I think they might have been angry. We published the executive assistant to the Minister of Transportation's phone number on Hockey Night in Canada. Um, it, was, uh, it was a good idea at the time, and it got, definitely got the minister's attention. But they embedded this legislation that said any, any additional 400 series road in Ontario would be told. Didn't tell anybody, and they came to us, and we opposed it when we found out about it, and we raised the message. But that's how we got to where we are with the 412 and the 418. But I can tell you that the mayor of Calden didn't know until a couple months ago when I told him that the total on the 413 when it's constructed is going to come to his community. And I also reminded the people in the north that when they put the addition onto the 404 going north, that's also going to have to be a toll road because you can't follow the legislation if you don't honor how it's written and they're going to be obligated. So we're making sure that the mayors of communities where uh, 400 series highways are being built or expanded are absolutely aware that if there are being toll roads and we're gaining more allies every day. Um, it would be simply, it would be very easy for the government to eliminate the tolls in any bill they bring forward and just put a section in that says the tolls are off the 412 and the 418. Because you're absolutely right. When you drive down Regional Road 23 in the morning, the cars are backed up from Highway Number 2 to Roslyn Road and there isn't a car on the 412. That's just dumb. 413 is the same as all well, and Whitney's the same. That's the 412s and Whitney. Yeah, where the numbers are the other one here. 418, you can land an aircraft on it on any, yeah. any day because there's just nobody on it, right? Yes? Yeah. I don't have a problem with people using these roads as paying the toll. But the 407 toll is ridiculous. You drive from here to Florida and I pay as much as you from here in Mississauga. Yeah. yeah, that's not something that no matter how much we try, we're going to be able to fix. That deal is is done. But on the 412 and the 418, we do have the ability to keep putting pressure on our local MPPs. Because every one of the candidates running in the last provincial election all signed uh, a pledge that they would help remove those polls. So it's not going to be sold off like the 407? No, it doesn't need to be. Um, it is a way to divert traffic off of Ton Road and off of uh, some of our other roads. It makes sense. Um, if they were to take the tolls off the 418, that would free up the intersection of Harmony Road. It would make a difference and it would stop having to spend lots of money to fix something. Um, it would help us. Um, but they have to think differently. And I, I, think, I think they eventually will drop the tolls. I know that there's enough people in this room that when you see your MPP, that you will ask them, when are you going to take the tools off the 412 um, and the 418? That would help us a lot. Actually, they just took out the administration charge. People need to use the fees. Yeah, it's the fee, easy. The fee is, is, is small. For the, the, fee, for the fee is very small, but if you don't have a transponder, it's not. Right. But the yeah. transponder is like $800 or something. Yeah. That's really good. So yes, sir. I understand that the 407 is hemmed in by a contract. But I wonder if there's any chance of negotiating something that says if we've got an incredible blockage on the 401, 407 becomes a relief item that is funded from the problem of that blockage time. So in the event of an emergency on the 401, an alternate route? Yeah. It, it is a great idea. We've pitched it a couple times. Because even this morning, um, the 401 was a mess in, in Whippy was it Dixon's Road? Something out this morning, yeah. or Harmony Road? Harmony. <laughs> 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 Back when Alan Gilkey was the mayor of Oshawa, I attended a planning meeting in about 10 years ago, they were squabbling about who's going to pay for the bridge. Well, it's not so much that. The cost is going through the land that is a cemetery. It is part of the challenges on the Whippy. Um, it creates a problem. And it's very difficult to expropriate cemetery land 